All right, guys, thought I'd come out and show you some more of the advanced features on the Hummingbird Helix uh, fish finders today. I've already been out here for a few hours. I've got a really nice pile of perch already in the buckets, getting pretty full. I don't want to do more than 20, <laughs> too much work, but I've got some perch underneath us right now on the fish finder. So let's take a look at them and I'll show you some of the advanced features of the Helix series. Okay, to start off with today, because I am fishing deeper, um, I'm actually gonna drill two holes. I'm gonna run two holes, one for my transducer. I'm gonna fish through the one here on the left. And it's just gonna make it so I don't have to worry about tangling up in my transducer each time. I generally do that when I'm fishing deeper because I can still see my target quite readily um, if I drill the holes close together. Okay, so you can see my jig going down here. It doesn't show up as soon because I'm not dropping actually right underneath the transducer, uh, but it looks like a pretty good target. All of this down here, so this is the bottom, and then this is all perch, a giant school of perch. Now one of the things we can do is we can manually set the bottom. So we've got a lot of hard bottom here, and we can try and get some more separation of these perch targets here. They're starting to come up a little bit. If I go into the menu, and we're gonna go down to the lower range, and we're gonna set the bottom depth at 32 feet. All right, so now the bottom's really actually right on the bottom here. And now I can start to see the separation of these different targets of these individual perch here. So let's go down and see if we can get one. You can see the uh, jig dropping down. There's a fish coming up to it there. All right, so I'm right. There's two or three fish looking at it right now. Ooh, I just got bit. There we go. Ooh, this feels like a good one. See it coming up on the graph there. They puke up a lot of stuff when you hook them this deep and bring them up fast. Oh man, that's a tank. There you go, decent sized perch. Another thing we can do is, you can see there's individual perch here, but it's really masked because they're, they're all packed together and it makes it really hard to see individual perch. So one thing we can do here is go to menu twice, go over to views. In the first video, I showed how I eliminated most of the views that I don't use, but now, we're going to go to a, a zoom view. So I'm gonna make the 2D zoom view visible. Okay, I'm gonna exit. And now I have the zoom view here on the left. I can back that off a little bit. And now I'm just looking at 22 to 33 feet here. And I can see a little bit more separation of the targets. So I'm gonna put my jig down there and uh, See if we can see it. There's just so many perch. You can look, look at all these perch stacked in here. It's incredible. There's the jig going down on the right. I'm gonna hopefully we'll see it come in the top of the screen here, and the fish will probably rise up quickly to it. There it is coming down. And there's the fish. Here I'll jig it right above them. You can see it now. There above that school. That school's coming up. There's at least one fish coming up to look at it. A second fish coming up to look at it. Now there's just tons of fish looking at it. There we go. I got one. I'm bringing it up. So that's a good way to get better target separation down there at the bottom, this is just a little guy, uh, is if you have those dense schools like that, you really wanna separate what's going on at the bottom. That also helps if there's some weeds down there and you wanna be able to kinda see fish coming in through the weeds. All right, let's take a look at what these perch look like on a flasher setting. And I have the A-scope setting rather than the full scope setting, which I covered in the first video. But these are all perch here up off the bottom. And then that's the bottom right down there. Since we have it set manually, it's probably right about there. So these are all perch stacked up. Um, these might even be trout coming way up off the bottom here. The trout will, you know, typically come in very quickly and will move to strike fast and will typically suspend more. So if I wanted to target trout here, I would jig higher off the bottom, you know, like 10 to 15 feet off the bottom like I'm doing here. And, oh, there's a fish coming up for it. There it is, I got it. I'm gonna bet that this is a trout based on the behavior. Yep, there you go, that's trout. <laughs> Back down the hole it goes. Okay, let's see if we can get down to some of those perch down there. There's my jig dropping down. Looks like there might be some perch suspended up there a few feet. I'm gonna stop and drop it right into them. 
It looks like there's a bunch more coming up to check it out. There we go, got one. See it coming up. And there you go, another fat perch. I'll show you some other really cool features. And I think one of the things that I like most about the Hummingbird Helix series is just having these GPS maps. So here you can see there's kind of this weird blue here. It's because I've already started to auto chart. So what I can do here is if I, if I back out here, you can see I have these different depth gradients. This is just the normal base maps that come with it, which is really nice. The bathymetry lines here are not really precise, so it's usually increments of 10 feet. Um, so if I zoom in here, this is the 30 foot line, 20 foot line, 10 foot line. But what I can do is I can buy Lake Master and upgrade to this. That would give me really high uh, definition bathymetry for this lake. And that's just a little chip that goes in the side here. But I can also do auto chart live on the ice. So I can auto chart this by just hitting mark and then hit auto chart and it builds out this circle. Now this is a big flat that I'm in, so it's not gonna be that interesting. Now if I was to drill a series of holes, I could go along and hit mark and auto chart each of those points and build my own custom map as I'm out there. So I could, you know, lay out the bathymetry from the shoreline out to where I'm at. Or if we find a hump out here, we can map it to one foot uh, contours. So it's a really cool feature, um, especially like if you're ice fish a lake or pond that um, has no base map and has no map in Lake Master. You can go out and either map it in open water with your boat, kayak, or canoe, or you can come out on the ice, drill a series of holes, and start mapping it that way. So another view you can do is just have a combination of traditional sonar and your flasher. This is a really good view for if you're transitioning, so say you're coming from flashers to sonar or you're vice versa, this gives you that ability to see both at the same time and kind of learn from each one. So you can see I'm dropping down there and there's a bunch of perch rising up to meet my jig. There we go, that one another nice perch. Okay, another cool thing you can do, um, probably not as applicable on uh, hard water, but definitely more so on open water when you want to go and review imaging data, is you can go to recording view, which is this screen here. You need to have a little flashcard stacked in here, a class 10 or higher. I just use a 32 gigabyte. Go to menu, start recording. It marks a waypoint. Um, if you already have a waypoint, that's, that point won't. And then uh, when you exit, it's now recording everything that's on your screen. You can go back and review your fishing data. Uh, you know, this is really nice for when you're reviewing imagery, like if you wanna go back and look at side imaging or down imaging and really study that structure. Or if you wanna share something like your screen with somebody or for educational purposes, uh, you can use a program called Hum Viewer or you can just review it on your sonar. Now one thing I do recommend getting upgraded to is a screen protector. Uh, these screens tend to get really dirty and blotched, especially in the snow and rain like I'm in, and fish splash on there. It can make it really hard to see, so definitely get a screen protector. I don't have it on this one, which is why it gets blotched up quite a bit. Now another thing you can do uh, on this unit, which is pretty cool, is you can hit the power button and you can turn on jig charge. If you hit this to the right, the screen will actually go bright white and you can charge this. Obviously you don't need to do it today in the daylight. Uh, you can also adjust how much light you have. You can dim it. Or you can just go to night mode and it automatically dims the screen overall to make it a little bit more easy on the eyes or if you're in a tent or pop-up shelter and fishing as well. There we go. Well, I hope this series helped you guys learn a little bit about how to use your open water helix ice units on your kayaks and canoes and use them out on the ice. There's a nice perch. Just remember to always, 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 especially during the early ice, carry your ice picks. These will help get you out and self-rescue if you fall through the ice. Check with the spud bar as you go along, especially early and late season, and look for that four inches of good black ice at a minimum before you head out and start knocking holes in the hard water. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below, and I will get back to you. Be sure and check out uh, the part one of this series, which goes over a lot of detail on how to convert your open water helix to hard water, um, including hardware. And then I go through all the settings that I like to use when I'm out 
fishing on the ice. And I hope this advanced one helps you put your helix to its maximum potential when you're out there. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.